What's up guys, it's Dolmatter here, and today we're going to be talking about the upcoming federal midterms for the United States, which are coming up in, I believe, November 8th is the official date of the voting, uh, when voting begins. I know it's sometime in November. Um, so the 2022 midterms, and one thing I find fascinating is I actually just saw this CNN article, it's about three weeks old now, so this is oldish news, um, but I found it fascinating that CNN is predicting a red wave because anyone that's familiar with CNN knows that they are probably one of, if not the most politically biased news stations out there that does not own up to its political bias. Because there are news stations that are um, politically biased more so than even CNN, but a lot of them admit it. They'll, they'll openly say they are a left-wing news site or a right-wing news site. Um, but the thing that's unique about CNN is CNN tries to pretend that it's bipartisan news, that it's just objective journalism, when in reality they are, uh, you know, the probably the main media wing of the Democratic Party. Um, you know, there's obviously a lot of relationships between members of the Democratic Party and uh, reporters at CNN. Some of them have been outed. Some people have actually been fired uh, recently because of illegal activities that they were doing, and, um, or in some cases just laid off. Um, in relation to uh, you know the different relationships that they've had you know between CNN and the Democratic Party, but this is you know one of the most left wing, uh, or at least mainstream left wing. Right, they're not really like far left, and a lot a lot of the time they're just kind of um, very biased towards the, I guess what you could call center left and mainstream left. Right, they're very politically biased towards the mainstream de Democratic candidates. Um, and what they are reporting is the Republican wave is building fast. So this is coming from uh, Chris Giliza on the 26th of May, so about three weeks ago. And let's go through this. So with, with just over five months before the 2022 midterm elections, it's becoming more and more clear that a Republican wave is building out in the country. On Thursday, the Cook Political Report with Amy Walter, a nonpartisan handicapping uh, service, moved 10 of its House race ratings in favor of Republicans, adjusting its predictions of the GOP gains in fall upward to between 20 and 35 seats. Given the president's job of approval is under... Uh, president Biden's job approval... Sorry about that. ...is underwater in dozens of districts he carried in 2020, any Democrat sitting in a single-digit Biden seat or a Trump seat is at severe risk or and even a few seats Biden carried by 10 or 15 points could lose, particularly in orphan states without a competitive statewide races driving turnout, wrote David Wasserman. So what's, what's really fascinating about this is um, that they're predicting this, right? Because generally, if they're predicting a 10 to 15 point loss for Biden, which means that he's going to lose... Um, a large percentage of his votes, you know, any pretty much anyone that was close in the last election, they're predicting is going to go to the Republicans. Um, and anything that was, you know, that they had, well, e even stuff that's not close, right? Like a 10 to 15 point lead is a pretty big lead in a political election when, you know, the country in a lot is largely gerrymandered in a lot of ways to be as close to 50-50 as possible, but like slightly bent towards one political party or the other. Because the way that they get away with a lot of their gerrymandering is by making districts that are, you know, making just a couple, instead of having like certain districts that are like, you know, plus 30, plus 40 points, they'll try to get like four or five districts where they split up their own vote. That way they have four or five districts that are plus 10 instead of, you know, one district plus 40 and a bunch of districts that are, you know, 50, 50. Um, and th what's fascinating about this is a lot of these pollsters, what they end up reporting tends to be about 10 to 15 points behind reality, right? So if you look at like a lot of the past elections, especially anything since like the 2000s, you know, uh, since like the Bush era, generally the polls tend to be off by about 10 to 15 points. So if they're predicting a 10 to 15 point gain, for the Republicans, it's actually probably going to be more in the range of 20 to 30 points uh, if we, you know, look at their past histories of how accurate they've actually been, right? Um, you know, we could be looking at a 20, 25, 30 point gain for Republicans, which could flip some, you know, areas that have been considered deep blue into being, you know, slightly red or, you know, pink. Um, 
And, and that, you know, it's absolutely fascinating. You know, when CNN is talking about this, it's, it's when stuff is starting to get, uh, you know, out of hand and out of Biden's control. Um, so let's, let's continue reading this. The Cook Political Party, uh, re- political report, sorry, I cannot read today apparently, now has 35 Democratic seats in its toss-up category or worse, only has 10 Republican seats in those same position. Now, again... As I was saying before, they, they tend to be 10 to 15 points off most of these reports, right? And I think part of that is because, um, one, they tend to just base it off of votes in, like, cities, right? They're not going to go out to the country and, like, go farmhouse to farmhouse asking people. Um, and, two, if you ask most right-wing people, like, what they think, a lot of them are just going to tell you to go fuck yourself, right? Like, they're not going to answer your, your your survey anyway. Um so, again, the fact that they have, you know, those 45 seats, you know, the 35 Democrat seats and 10 Republicans that they have in the toss-up category are probably all guaranteed Republican seats. And a lot of them that they have it, that are they don't consider toss-ups better where they consider, like, close to a toss-up but, you know, slight Democratic lead are actually probably going to be the real toss-up seats. Um, that's in keeping with how off. Oh my God, I cannot read today. That's in keeping with how other political handicapping outlets are assessing the current political movement. While Biden's poor standing sets the stage for a national election with down ballot consequences, Democrats will try to run dozens of individual races in which their battle tested incumbents can weather the storm by discrediting GOP candidates, wrote Nathan Gonzalez and Jacob Rubishkin in a recent edition of the Insider Elections newsletter. Some Democrats are currently running ahead of Biden's job rating, but that isn't sustainable on a broad scale as voters focus on races and realize control of Washington is at stake. Democratic survivors in competition in competitive districts will be the exception rather than the rule. Um, this is something I completely agree with. I think, you know, unless you have somebody who has a strong... Um, political presence of their own to the point where they can kind of overcome the taint that has been like associated with Joe Biden over the last two years, they're, pr- they're probably not going to maintain their seat, right? Like you'll have certain people who are in like insanely safe districts, you know, like a plus 40 or I think Atlanta is like a plus 68 district, um, the one district in Atlanta, you know, they'll maintain their seats. They might lose 10 or 15 points. You know, it might go from like a plus 68 to like a plus 45 or something like that. But the, those people will undoubtedly maintain their seats. Um, but yeah, a lot of these people in these close districts, if they don't have a strong political personality of their own or they aren't well-known within that community, which sometimes a lot of these people aren't, right? They're just, you know, some of them are, for lack of a better term, a plant, right? They're just told, hey, this is a district that we can win, you know, but we don't really have a candidate there. You know, go do this. Whereas other politicians are actually born and raised in that area, so they have a certain rapport with the, the locals. Right. So if you have someone that's either not well known in that area because they're from out of that area and just got, you know, assigned that area or you have someone that is, you know, within 10 to 15 points, usually of what normally happens in that election or or in that area during elections, they're probably going to end up losing. Um, You know, basically, it's going to come down to are you in an insanely safe district that never goes to the Republicans? Right. Something like in Atlanta. Or are you in, you know, are you so well known in your area and respected that even though these people don't like Biden, they will vote for you specifically anyway? Um, And then you have to hope that enough of the people in that area are willing, you know, they like you more than they hate Joe, right? Which depending on the area, you know, and depending on how liked that person is, maybe, um, but that it's not a safe bet entirely either. Um, so let's continue inside elections list 21 democratic seats in its toss up categories or worse while Republicans just have nine seats in similar peril. So this is similar to this one, a little bit less for the Democrats, um, and roughly the same for the Republicans. So they had 35, uh, to the inside elections, 21 and 10 to the nine. Um, uh, the confluence of these prognostications are built on several historical trends that have been predicted uh, predictive over decades. The first is that midterm elections tend to be bad for the president's party. Since World War II, the average seat loss for the president's party in the midterms is 26. And again, we're talking about an average here, right? So obviously, this means good presidents and bad presidents, right? Um, presidents that were well liked and presidents that were not well liked. 
and they still lose an average of 26 seats. And Biden is possibly the most disliked president in the history of the United States. Um, he's, well, I, I, I don't know if I'd go that far. Definitely the most disliked president since World War II because, you know, before this I'd probably say it was Jimmy Carter. But the thing with Jimmy Carter is that he was disliked for his um, political abilities more so than him personally, whereas Biden seems to have both, right? Like, people don't like Biden as a person because he's very corrupt, whereas Jimmy Carter was more inept than corrupt, and people don't like Biden because he's inept. So he's both inept and corrupt, whereas Carter was just kind of, like, people People like Carter the person, they just didn't like Carter the president. Biden doesn't have that luxury. Biden is not liked as a president or as a person, and that is really going to hurt him. Um, you know, we might see regardless of who ends up, you know, uh, running in 2024, again, this, this is about 2022, but, you know, with Biden continuing throughout, you know, another two years after this, assuming he survives because the dude's 107, but, you know, we might see a Reagan-esque red wave in 2024, regardless of who runs, right? Like, especially if you had like a really charismatic leader, um, I think DeSantis could pull it off, but I doubt DeSantis will run against Trump. Trump might be the only person that is, he is as disliked by the left as Biden is by the right. And the, the thing is, though, is that the left doesn't really like Biden either, right? So, like, in, in a 2024 election, some of them might vote him as the lesser of two evils, but a lot of people aren't going to actually like him. Um, and I think you might see something similar to, you know, kind of like how Reagan ended up getting... Uh, you know, I think he won 49 out of the 50 states, right? You might see something like that again because of how bad of a job Joe Biden has been doing. And, you know, some of that isn't his fault. Some of that is just the war in Ukraine and, um, you know, the lack of resources, of the, not really lack of resources, but, you know, the higher competition for resources between countries because, you know, Russia is like a ninth of the global landmass and Ukraine is the second largest country in Europe. So essentially two major, you know, two very large countries, all their resources are no longer available for trade. Um, Russia because of sanctions and the Ukraine because they need them for the war. Um, you know, it, it does make what is available, you know, much more competitive to get access to. But some of it is his fault, like them not handing out the, the you know, the different, um, uh, I'm having a brain for you, them not handing out the... Uh, the app, not the applications, the permits for the uh, the fracking, right? Because this is one thing that you hear a lot of the Democrats talk about is that, oh, all the land that Trump made available for fracking is still available for fracking. And they're technically true. The problem is, is that you actually need to get permits from the government in order to frack there. And the Biden administration has not been handing out that permit. So while they have made that land still available, they aren't actually handing out the permits. And that is causing oil prices to spike because you know, places like Saudi Aramco, a lot of these Middle Eastern oil companies realize, you know, right now we can, you know, really drive the prices up on the Americans because as soon as the Americans become oil independent under the next Republican presidency, we're probably never going to be able to sell them oil again. So we need to sell them as much oil as possible while we have that luxury at as high of a price as possible, right? Make them pay a premium before they get out. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's continue. Let's continue. Um, so the first is that the midterm elections tend to be bad for the president. Oh, wait, we already read that part. The trend is exacerbated when the president is unpopular, as defined by having an approval rating under 50%. And I believe his approval rating right now is 41%. Yeah, right here, 41%. Um, the president's party almost always suffers a net loss of U.S. House seats in the midterm elections. However, losses tend to be much steeper when the president is unpopular. In Gallup's polling history, presidents with a job approval rating below 50% have seen their parties lose 37 House seats on average in the midterm election. That compares to an average loss of 14 seats when the president's approval rating is above 50%. Biden's approval rating sits at 41% in the most recent Gallup poll and has not been higher than 43% since August of 2021. The second predictor of gains and losses in midterm election is a so-called generic ballot question. Wording varies poll by poll, but generally speaking, the question asks whether you would vote for the Republican or Democratic candidate for the House if elections were held today. The generic ballot tends to favor Democrats marginally in, new in a neutral political year. Much more on the why of that here, okay? We might check that out in another video. 
Um, a recent national poll from Quinn. Uh, Winnipeg University, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, showed that the Republicans with a four-point edge on the generic ballot. The reality of this current political movement is that moment is that it appears that things are getting worse for the Democrats the closer we get to election. Fears of a wave washing away even incumbents previously considered safe now seem entirely justified. And again, this is coming from CNN. So CNN tends to be very democrat biased and they even they are talking about how a red wave is imminent right like you are going to have people they in there they think people within you know 10 to 15 points are probably going to lose their seats which again based on you know historical data suggests that it could be as high as people within 20 to 30 points right because a lot of those um, point predictions tend to be 10 to 15 points off right so if they're if they're guessing 10 to 15 you add another 10 to 15 on top of that, we're looking at 20 to 30, right? So you could be in a uh, an area that's considered fairly deep blue and it could be flipping, you know, to, uh, you know, like a pinkish area where, you know, the Repu Republicans end up winning by one or two points. Um, and now we're going to, like, kind of switch over to Twitter and see what Twitter is saying about this. Um, and, again, it's Twitter. Uh, Twitter tends to be kind of left wing or left leaning at least what tends to be uh promoted in you know there's actually uh good information on why that happens oh, i can't wait till elon takes over so that, that stops happening um but yeah let's look at twitter's reaction so first from sticks um this is an extremely important uh bellwether on the midterms to come and the intermediate term trajectory of u.s politics generally so, so he's uh quote tweeting greg abbott breaking news republican uh, Maria Flores just beat a Democrat to win an open seat for Congress in a historically Democratic district in South Texas. Congress just got more Republicans. Texas just got more red. The future looking bright red in Texas. Um, this is something I half agree with. I think the big problem that Texas has is immigration and not even from, uh, you know, Mexico, although that is also a problem as well for them. Um, because for some reason, you know, the one thing I find fascinating about a lot of these Latin American countries is that they leave governments that would be considered, you know, left wing by American standards. They come to the United States and they vote for the exact same issues that they had in their own country. Um, but not only that, they have an internal immigration problem where people from a lot of, you know, blue states are moving, leaving their hell holes, leaving the fire they started and still voting blue. You know, probably the most famous example of this is Joe Rogan who still to this day talks about, oh, I'm a, I'm a left winger, you know, I vote this, I vote this, I vote this, um, despite fleeing California for exactly what he voted for, right? So they, they have a big problem with that in Texas is that, you know, they, they've made this amazing state because it's been a Republican state and now it's getting destroyed by, it's, you know, slowly going to get turned blue and destroyed by Democrats. And, you know, that's kind of the history of the United States in some sense, right? Like the, uh, you know, uh, Oh, what's the uh, uh, Michigan, right? Michigan was a red state until I believe the 1940s or 50s. Then it switched to blue. And within 15 years, uh, you know, what is now known as the Rust Belt started to begin, right? Like a lot of the, all of that moved out of there. California was a, you know, a, a solid red state until the 1990s, right? People think of it as like the bluest state in existence, but it was a state that was consistently red until like the 80s and 90s. Um, and now, and you know, it was the fastest growing state in the United States for the, you know, a large percentage of that time. And now look at it, right? It's starting to, you know, it was the first time, I think it was last year, the year before that California had net population loss. Um, you know, they're, everyone's fleeing the state, right? It's, you know, this is just kind of the history of the United States. The, the, whichever party tends to be the capitalist party, because even this has happened even before the Republicans were a party will build up a state and then the other party will come in and they'll take over because a bunch of their voters move there to, you know, kind of take the fruit that has been grown there and, but they won't replace the fruit for lack of a better term. Um, so let's move on to some of these other tweets until the day after midterms, this account will be used strictly to expose and dunk on um, Mehmet Oz while promoting John Fetterman, with everything at stake on women's rights to gun violence. I hope you will follow along for the ride. Oz will know me better than he knows his wife. Okay, so I'm guessing Oz is... No, oh, not what I meant to... Did not mean to print. Uh, I'm guessing this is is a... Oh! I didn't realize Dr. Oz's name was Mehmet. Uh, I also didn't know that he was Turkish. 
But, uh, okay, apparently he's running as a Republican, I assume? Yeah, okay, yeah, he is running as a Republican. Interesting. The more you know. Uh, anyway. Uh, voting in the midterms may be the most important thing you've done or will do in your lifetime. I love how they say this every election, right? Yeah, I, I knew it. Democracy, diversity, equality, gun control, right? Like, all... They make their political beliefs their entire um, personality. But th this is something that I actually... I, like, as dumb as it is, right? Because, I mean, it, it's most of the time, very little changes with one election. Um, you know, it's more of a slow and gradual process, uh, of the, you know, Democrats doing what they want, the Republicans being spineless cunts who won't actually uh, undo anything the Democrats do or stand up for anything they actually believe in. Um, but yeah, I think one of the good things that the Democrats, <coughs> excuse me, that the Democrats do is they, they make every election the biggest election in history, although they tend to be, in anything that is not the federal election, they tend to be vastly underrepresented, be underrepresented because they never leave their fucking... Um, houses and they never actually pay attention to this shit. Um, raise your hand if you are voting blue down the ballot in midterms. I want all blue to follow you. Okay. Uh, let me guess. Another love cats, converse, and staying clean. Hashtag resist. Okay, well, Trump has been out of power now for two years, so what are you resisting? Um, after the midterms, President Joe Biden will assert that he is going to run for re-election and the White House will issue a correction calling it right now <laughs> that's actually pretty funny to whom it may concern the midterms are in 149 days stop stirring the pot speculate and sowing division start explaining to people what will happen if we don't vote this november and what more we can do to accomplish it i'm going to a guess uh okay nothing in the, the bio to suggest their political opinion oh okay they, they made a political tweet the State of the Union is strong. Okay, I'm guessing that was from the State of the Union address. Um, and they are... Oh, wait. Naomi Biden, is she actually... Is this... Oh, she must be actually... Yes, yeah, so, okay, so this person is related to Biden. That explains why she's so biased towards Biden. Um, I think it's quite literally his granddaughter. Um... Yeah, so, I mean, fair play. I don't. Th it's hard to tell if she's uh, insane or just, you know, supporting grandpa. Uh, anyway, uh, one of the worst things the media can do is frame the January 6th committee as a way to help Democrats in the midterm. The midterms are about the midterms. The January 6th committee is about holding Trump accountable. Accountability shouldn't be partisan, and this committee is bipartisan. Um, there's multiple reasons I disagree with this. One is, well, I, I think actually, you know, I, I do agree with it in terms of the, one of the worst things they can do is frame this as Democrats versus Republicans because it's just going to make anyone that is right wing kind of stand strong against the January 6th committee, right? So if they actually want a resolution when it comes to January 6th, um, you know, making it a divisive issue instead of just saying, like, some of these idiots uh, who happen to be right-wing, you know, like, the second you make it Republicans versus Democrats instead of these idiots versus the people, then you you make the Republicans stand with them, right? Um, oh, anyway, uh, guys, the price of gas is not Biden's fault. It's Congress's for refusing to pass laws to make get price gouging illegal take it out on the midterms and vote democrat uh no I, like what how are you gonna pass laws on saudi arabia right like that's the thing a lot of the like the big problem here is that one it's not price gouging right like a lot of this is just tr these gas companies attempting to match inflation and two the price gouging that is happening is coming from another country because your president has allowed the United States to not become oil independent despite the fact that Trump had basically initiated a plan to make the U.S. oil independent by 2021-2022. Right now, the United States should be oil independent, and the only increase in gas prices should be due to, uh, due to the inflation rate, which uh, which 
that you could actually partially blame on Trump, right? Like, b- both under Trump and Biden, Jerome Powell printed a fuck ton of money. Um, so had the, you know, had the Democrats actually followed through with Trump's plan, they literally could have pinned the entire gas price surge on Trump. But because Biden, the Biden administration isn't handing out those permits to frack on all that land, they kind of fucked themselves because that allowed Saudi Arabia to price gouge, which increased the increase in gas prices more than it would have been increased in the first place, just from the you know inflation from the overprinting of currency. So, yeah, it, I mean, it is Biden's fault. Like, not all of it, but a good chunk of it is Biden's fault because he, you know, the, the Saudi Arabia is not fucking dumb, right? They're, they're, they realize that the second a Republican president gets into power, the U.S. is going to become oil independent for the first time since prior to World War II, and they are not going to be able to sell oil to the Americans, who are one of the largest oil consumers on the planet, right? That's who they sell a large chunk of their oil to. Um, they also sell it to a bunch of other countries, but that's where they get a large chunk of their oil. And if right now they can price gouge the shit out of the Americans while they still have them by the balls, then why wouldn't they, right? Like, they understand, like, it's not like you're worried about them not coming back to be a customer because you know they're not coming back to be a customer, right? Because as soon as the Republicans get power again, they're going to be handing out all those point, uh, permits for fracking, and the U.S. is going to become energy independent, and then you're not going to sell to them anyway, right? So you might as well price gouge them for the last four, eight, however long the Democrats stay in power, um, you know, years, because, you know, it's... Why wouldn't you, right? You don't have to worry about, like, maintaining a good rapport with them, right? Just fucking string them out for all they're worth while you have the chance before they're gone. Um, Palmer Report. If you're sitting around muttering, chilling, terrifying, then you're trying to lose the midterms. You'd rather feel judicious than adopt a winning mindset and put the work in and try to win, which makes you the biggest loser of all. Snap out of it, you narcissist asshole. Um... Okay, um, I'm, gu- I'm guessing he's, I'm not sure who he's talking about here. I'm not really too familiar with the Palmer Report. Um, okay, this is like a multi-part. Okay, yeah, he's definitely against Trump. Um, so yeah, chilling, terrifying. I actually kind of agree with this guy. As much as I, you know, don't like his, uh, you know, his political views, I actually agree with him. You know, this is one thing that the Democrats do, or Democrat voters do a lot of the time if it's not actually the presidential election is they'll talk about how evil, horrible, blah, 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 the Republicans are, and then just not go and vote, right? They'll just get fucking high and not do anything. Um, After the midterms, Joe Biden became the lame duck president. In addition, Kamala will be a lame duck vice president. Probably true, um, although technically a lame duck refers to anyone who is not able to rerun for election. Um, So... Biden, you know, I mean, Biden probably won't get reelected, but he technically can. Um, this is a compilation of clips explaining why Russians think they're winning and they don't need to negotiate. Spoiler, they're waiting for the GOP to prevail in the midterms to, and abandon Ukraine. They're also encouraged by our media coverage, especially Tucker Carlson. Okay, cool. Right? Like, the G- everyone knows the GOP is a fucking anti, like... The, the mainstream Republicans have been largely anti-war since Trump became, like, the mainstream guy, right? That's why all the neocons don't like him, right? Because the neocons have largely been ousted from power within the Republican Party. It is now made up of libertarians, who are obviously anti-war, Christian conservatives, who are anti-war, and to some degree, the paleoconservatives are starting to regain uh, some of their political power, although they're largely told to shut up when it comes to economic issues, which is kind of funny because they're actually probably, when it comes to economics at least, they're the Republicans that the left would agree with most. Um, but all three of the now, you know, the two of the major factions and the one kind of resurging faction within the political party are all anti-war parties, right? They, you know, they're very much like, why should we have this international apparatus to try and defend all these other countries when half those countries stab us in the back any chance they get and especially if you're a right winger in the united states a lot of these countries that you're defending right that you're supposed to be defending their political apparatuses are directly against you and do everything they can to undermine you right like one thing i find fascinating is how many european countries will constantly shit on america 
despite the fact that they're only in the situation they're in because of America, right? Like, if Germany and a lot of the Nordic countries and a lot of these other countries actually met the defense standards they're supposed to under the NATO contract, let alone um, to become an, uh, a great power uh, like they used to be or like the United States currently is, you know, they would not have all the luxurious, you know, fucking, uh, you know, health care and all this other nonsense that they have, right? So much of that is paid for um, with American blood and money, right? Because America is willing to fight every single war, right? They're in a position to do this because of America. And then half these countries talk shit about America. Not not on, not just like even the regular people. A lot of the time it's the politicians that do. And they ask like, oh, why can't America have all this stuff too? It's like, oh, it's because we actually have to fucking pay for everything, right? It's very like the way I look at it is very much like a stereotypical like TV couple where the guy has like this realistic expectations of how you spend your money. And then the woman is like, oh, well, you know, the other couple, they have, you know, a boat and this nice car and all this other stuff. And it's like, oh, yeah, well, we have to pay for our fucking kids, right? Like, the, that's very much how I feel when it comes to, like, the EU and the United States. Is like, the EU is this dude who's, like, very stern and very good with his money, although, you know, still in debt because of all the stupid shit he's doing. Um, so maybe not that good with his money. But the, the the EU is just, like, absolutely fucking horrendous, right? They're trying to drive them more and more into debt despite the fact that, you know, the U.S. is trying to turn it around. Um, and then you have the uh, the Dems in the United States who are also trying to spend more money. And and to be fair, the, the Republicans are pretty shitty about spending money too half the time, or at least not, uh, you know, you need to at least in- keep the tax increases there long enough to pay off the fucking debt you already have. Um, so... Anyway, a ruling class primarily f- concerned with ins- insulating itself from accountability has troubling consequences for all Americans. For the GOP, coasting to victory in the midterm simply by existing as an alternative is not enough. Um, I mean, it probably is, but this is the problem that the GOP's had for, I mean, honestly, since the Paleocons got ousted for power, with the exception of the Reagan Revolution. They're fucking spineless cunts, right? And we need the GOP to really stand up for what they believe in. And, you know, uh, you have, like, the America First movement and shit like that. We actually need somebody to follow through on that instead of just talking about it and then once they get into power being too spineless and just appeasing the left on any little issue that they want, right? Again, you know, it's like... (laughs) It's so that one issue, the, uh, the or that one joke about how in 20 years the uh, the Republicans will be talking about how the Democrats are the real pedophobes, right? Any issue that the Democrats push, within five years it'll be accepted. Within 10 years, the Republicans will reluctantly accept it. And within 15 years, the Republicans will absorb it into their party and talk about how the Democrats were always the real whatever. Um, you know, they're spineless and they don't stand up for anything. Uh, raise your hand if you agree Republicans will take back control of the House and Senate in the midterms. Probably. So far, our participation in the Democratic primaries is down 3% from 2018, while participation in the Republican primaries is up 36% across 17 states, consistent with indicators of midterm penalty. So, yeah, th- this is one thing I find fascinating is I think the Republican base, at least, you know, I think a lot of the politicians themselves are still spineless and useless, but I think the base is getting more and more animated and the good thing the best part about that is you might start to see people rising through the political ranks very rapidly who are actually going to stand up for these issues you know a lot of like true grassroots movements with politicians like people that are nowadays just you know sitting at home you know bitching about shit looking online and like seeing all this nonsense going on in their country and I think they're really getting sick of it and I think you're going to see a lot of those people you know say fuck it I'm going to become a politician I'm going to run for you know my local mayor or my local whatever and rapidly rise through the party because they actually follow through on their ideals um, squad rep Bowman warns civil war if GOP takes control in midterms I doubt it um, I don't know. I mean, maybe, 
But I don't think there'll be a civil war until a Republican gets back into actual, like, office. Until there's another Republican president. Because the thing is, it's so hard for them to animate their base against anything when they're actually in power. Right? This is why there's no Black Lives Matter protests anymore. Because now they're in power, right? There won't be Black Lives Matter protests again until the Republicans in power. Then all of a sudden it'll be, oh, America's the most racist country to ever exist again. Because they only, one, it's only beneficial for them to animate their base when they're not in power. And two, most of their base is too dumb to be animated when they're not in power. Or when, or, yeah, yeah, yeah when they are in power. Um, predictions, the media will spend the 1-6 hearing assisting Trump will win 2024. Uh, he, true, and he probably will. Uh, the hearings will destroy what little was left of Trump's 2024 viability uh, and shift the midterms in three points in Democrat. No. Uh, the media will ignore these results and say we're all doomed. Um, strongly doubtful. Um, we're supposed to be seizing winning momentum out of these hearings. We're supposed to be building on this when the midterms put Trumpism out of its misery. You can do that if you're just staring at your own screen limbering about how chilling and terrifying this all is. Okay, so that's what is chilling and terrifying thing meant from before. Um, yeah, no, I don't think, like, the January 6th stuff, I think, is going to be, it's going to end up being a nothing burger, right? Because the thing with the January 6th stuff is nobody who is not in, like, the only people who actually take the January 6th stuff, like, seriously are people who are purposely just disingenuous and trying to make it more serious than it is, or... People who are actually so dumb that they truly believe it's a serious issue, right? We own the building, or not even own, we control the building, therefore we're in power, has not been a thing for like a hundred years at this point, right? Like nobody thought that like if these fucking idiots take over this building that all of a sudden, you know, Trump's in power again, right? It's absolute lunacy. Not to mention that all the evidence points to that being orchestrated by the fucking FBI, right? Like that one dude, I can't remember his name, having a, a brain fart on it now, who was actually the guy who inc incited it and like got a lot of those people in there is on his ranch down in like Texas or some shit and was never even attempted to have been charged. Like a lot of, like th there's a lot of suspicious stuff around there that points to the FBI being the actual ones that orchestrated that. And basically they had a bunch of useful fucking idiots that went into the building. Um, and now with the FBI, what, you know, reports of the FBI trying to remove as many conservatives as possible from the, you know, the ranks of the FBI. Um, yeah, it's, it's getting, you know, it's getting more and more looking like that, you know, that was true, that that guy actually wasn't some kind of FBI agent. Uh, we're supposed to be seizing when, oh yeah, we already read that one. Uh, the midterm elections are right around the corner and it's time to focus on expanding our Senate majority so we can pass progressive policies blocked by Manchin and Cinema. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, that's not going to happen, dude. Uh, with 150 days to midterms, essentially, you know, it's worth repeating. False flag, horrific stage event, blamed on political enemy, and used as a pretext to start a war or enact draconian laws in the name of national security. True. I imagine there'll be a bunch of false flags when the uh, Republicans get back into power because the Democrats will have to. Um, also sitting around muttering fear porn words you're not putting in any work to try and win. How much... Work if you put into the midterms, zero. I know this because lazy asses and narcissists sit around mind chilling, terrifying, never put in any damn work. I love always calling them out, but the thing is, he's doing as much fear porn up here by just even talking about 1 6, right? Like, 1 6 should move us three points Democratic favor. No, because again, if they actually listened to you and didn't fall for the fear porn, no one would care about 1 6, right? It's a fucking, like, that's the thing, right? Like, this guy. This Palmer guy needs to realize that fear porn is the only way that they're actually going to capitalize on January 6th. It's the only way they've been able to capitalize on it all in all is people who are purposely d d disingenuous and then the people who fall for the fear porn. Uh, I feel tons of other folks have made the connection, but the reason why Democrats are concentrating on January 6th so hard right now is because they have literally nothing to offer voters for the midterms. Democrats haven't done shit. True. And also, like, they'd be focusing on that probably regardless, right? Like, they'd talk themselves up, but... Honestly, more than talking yourself up, making your opponent look bad is usually a better strategy, as fucking bad as that sounds, right? So many people just don't like politicians in general. that They vote out of spite for the other guy, not out of liking the actual candidate themselves. Um, 
It's time for a change. Joe Biden does not let President Kamala Harris is a vile pile of trash. Impeach them after the midterms. Uh, I doubt they'll get impeached. Why do you want everybody's gun? Because they're planning to kill us and they don't, I don't want to get shot. That's actually pretty funny. But yeah, I doubt they'll get uh, um, impeached. You would be a fucking idiot to vote Democrat in the midterms or vote Republican. True. Meanwhile, in New York, Governor Hochul just signed a bill that bans anyone under the age of 21 from buying or possessing a semi-automatic rifle. Thank you, New York Democrats. Elections at all levels matter. Midterms in five months. Um, yeah, it's so stupid. Like, remember at first it was just automatic weapons, and now it's auto. Now it's semi-auto. Um, you know, it's it's just gonna keep going, right? Like that's the thing. These. These blue states are just going to... They're going to be like the UK trying to fucking ban butter knives because people are stabbing everyone with them. Uh, you're damn right the Democrats can win the midterms. No, they can't. The, how is this dude... Yeah, political analysis ahead of the curve. Yeah, maybe like fucking 60 years ahead of the curve if you think they're going to win midterms, but they're not anytime soon. Yeah, you could either have democracy or be poor is one hell of a motto going into the midterms. Uh... Serious question for Republicans and independents. What would you rather have? $2.50 gas or, or, or democracy? This, this is one thing I find absolutely fucking hilarious. I love Look at this answer. Look at this answer. Gas. <laughs> answer the man. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. But the, the, the two things I find absolutely funny about this is that, one, the idea that democracy ends if you don't lose is like the most ironic, or I mean, if you do lose, is the most ironic thing ever, right? And this is one thing I find hilarious about the Democrats, um, is they always say, you know, this is a threat to democracy about every time they fucking lose an election, despite the fact that they're the only ones trying to undermine this shit, right? Um... Yeah, it's, it's just, it's, you know, one of the biggest cases of projection I've ever seen. Except in one sense, right? The one thing I actually do kind of agree with them is, and, you know, you always see Republicans say this, is uh, we're, we're not a democracy, we're a constitutional republic. It's like, technically, that's a type of democracy, right? They usually, like, what the Democrats want is absolute democracy, right? Essentially mob rule, um, because they find it beneficial to them if just the city, because then essentially the largest city in each state would, you know, which are mostly blue, would basically get to decide what that state is, and they would just dominate elections after that, right? The Republicans want a republic because, one, that's what the United States was founded on, and a lot of them tend to be constitutionalists and, you know, actually conservative. They want to conserve that. And, two, it's obviously beneficial to them because, you know, if you live in the middle of nowhere, you don't want some fucking idiot in the city telling you what you can and can't do, right? Like, if you are... A hundred miles from your nearest fucking neighbor in Alaska, you and you have bears and shit all around you, and then you're not allowed to have a gun because some fucking idiot in you know New York decided that you know he's gonna ban all guns, and the only thing you can defend yourself from a grizzly bear with is a fucking you know a goddamn pellet gun. Of of course, like the, the Republicans don't want that because Republicans live out in like the middle of fucking nowhere. And they they have to face the reality of the world, not, like, the reality of fucking some man-made shithole city. Which is also one thing that's hilariously ironic is you'll always have all these people from the cities talking about, we need to stop pollution, we need to stop, like, humans are a virus, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, Buddy's, like, living on his fucking farm, living off the food he grew, fucking... You know, he, and then they'll blame Republicans for, you know, not stopping climate change. Meanwhile, they live in a city where that couldn't exist without fucking millions and millions of tons of concrete and fucking gasoline and all this other shit. And, you know, they, they are the ones causing climate change despite bitching about the people who aren't causing it. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's read one or two more of these and then we'll, uh, we'll call her a day because I got to get some other work done. Um, so I get the party in power loses seats in the midterm. It's president, but what if the opposing party is led by a twice impeached president who led a violent coup against the government? We're in unprecedented times. Get involved like you believe we can win. We can. This is so ridiculous. Okay. Twice impeached. Yeah, but he was never guilty on either impeachment, right? Like, 
Neither one of those impeachments matter. That's like telling somebody that they've been they, you've been charged twice and found innocent, right? Like so, what like what do you mean? Like yeah, he was innocent both times. Um, they found nothing wrong with him. Um, a violent coup against the government again. Trump didn't initiate that. A man who for some reason hasn't been charged with links to the fucking FBI, who's per- right now chilling in his fucking ranch in I think Texas or some shit was the man who initiated it. And the only violence there was when a cop shot a fucking woman, who, uh, to be fair, she was a fucking idiot and probably deserved that bullet. Um, But the only person that was shot was shot by the people defending the building, not by the fucking people who were trying to, like, take over the building, right? So, no, it wasn't violent. Um, Well, it wasn't violent, at least on the, the fucking idiots trying to take it over. It wasn't violent on their end. And Trump didn't initiate it, and neither one of those impeachments matter, right? This is what I mean. These people always take something that is, like, technically true and spin it out of context in order to make it look, make them look better, right? And this is a great example of, you know, the fear porn that Palmer guy was bitching about. But the funny thing is, this will do, like, much, much more for the Democrats. So this kind of fear porn, well, is better for them than anything that fucking Palmer idiot's doing. Um... Uh, the question is, can we afford to wait for the midterms? For what? Uh, Twitter isn't prepared for the 2022 midterms. It's going to be a mess for Democrats. True. Uh, they can't overcome us. We shall win. Rose Sharon. Blue Wave 2022. Okay, I'm guessing this is a... Oh, Russian born naturalized citizen. Member of the Communist Party became notable for her left wing activism, which eventually led to her arrest in 1951. She was charged with forming a conspiracy to overthrow the government. Okay, so this person's like an actual fucking communist. Um, like, unironic communist. Uh, let's see, what was she arrested and released? Uh,. Uh, where should, let's see, I'm trying to figure out, yeah, so she left after, okay, so yeah, this, per, like, this Rose girl is, like, actually probably fucking evil, she was literally part of the Communist Party before and after the genocides in Russia, or in the Soviet Union, and then came to America to try and preach communism over there, yeah, Definitely a good person you want to fucking uh, be quoting. Badass foremothers. Oh, yeah, definitely. Quotes from American Her Story on democracy, justice, truth, and other pressing topics. Meant to enrage, inspire, shame, and call to action. Oh, my God. When your boyfriend pull an all-nighter together and cram... Oh, midterms. Yeah, that's for midterm. That is not related to... Uh, yeah, that that is fucking fascinating. Jesus Christ. I don't trust anyone trashing the Democratic Party with exactly five months to go until Election Day. I want legislation to pass, but also understand we need more seats. Gas is high, but it's a global issue. We have 153 days to go. Donate, volunteer, let's win the midterms. Um, it is a global issue to a certain extent because America and other countries, Canada... Um, I think a lot of the European countries all printed a massive amount of money during the fucking COVID epidemic. That way they could shut everything down and cause hyperinflation around the world. And the biggest issue there was America, who the number one person you can blame for that is Jerome Powell, uh, because they're so important to the global economy that their inflation just affects everyone. Saudi Arabia is why it's been such a higher spike in the United States than really anywhere else because America could have achieved energy independence under Biden, which he could have taken credit for. That's the one thing I find fascinating about this is yes, Trump was the one who enacted that plan, but because of the timeline had Biden won the election and followed through with it, America would have achieved energy independence under Biden and he could have taken credit for that, but he didn't. And he made American gas prices soar because Saudi can price gouge, Saudi Arabia can price gouge now plus the inflation that was already caused and, you know, he went from having a slight amount of inflation like, or inflation causing a slight gas in pr- price, price increase to a massive price increase because of what he fucked up. Like, he is probably 
that was probably the biggest political blunder of his administration, and it's going to bite him in the ass so fucking hard um, come these midterms. But, yeah, anyway, well, let's continue on here. I'm going to do one or two more, which I just said, but I want to do one or two more. Uh, yes, we can. We will. Voting Trump endorsed Harriet Hyman come midterms. Bye-bye, Liz. Okay. Uh, Democrats are just getting started. They will pull out every dirty trick between now and the midterms. True. Uh, let's see. Inflation. You, let's, midterms are oversimplified. Big, I'm guessing this is the biggest issue. Inflation. United States House Committee attack. Okay. Yeah, probably. Um, I'll keep saying the blue face in the public, or I'll keep saying it until I'm blue in the face. Public vitriol is leading to persistent violence. Specifically, far-right extremism is now much more than a political problem. It is a national security threat. Oh my God. Ex-Republican, proud, independent. Fucking neocons, man. Fucking neocons. Man, these people... Far-right extremism on the rise. Where? Where? Like, the, you know, the one thing in January 6th, which wasn't really far-right, more as just a bunch of... I would say, like, I don't, I don't know many other political opinions. I know there's, like, a bunch of people that did it, so it's harder to say everyone's political opinion. But you ha they were followers of Trump, who is... By today's standard, center right, but until about ten years ago, would have been considered center left. And he is a far like, oh my God. Meanwhile, BLM burns down. Like these people are so fucking insane. And the worst among them are the ex Republicans, right? These people were fucking rhinos who should have been ousted from the party twenty years ago, thirty years ago, forty fucking years ago. But anyway, you know. BLM can burn down city after city after city, but fucking Miles Taylor here, this absolute fucking jackass, is bitching about far-right extremism, right? Despite the fact that it's a fucking non-issue. Um, let's see. CNN admits Republicans are the best position for midterms in over 80 years. True. Um, well, I don't know about that. I mean, for a midterm, probably. Um, grab them by the midterms. That's a funny one. I don't know if I don't know if this girl is pro Trump or not, but uh, okay, no, they're pro Biden. But either way, that is still a funny fucking picture. Actual good meme from the left. Um, as the midterms loom, the rats will seek better shelter. True. Uh, Jimmy Fela. Before you get mad at the Democrats for overhyping the January sixth committee, keep in mind that your party was destroying the country. You might try to <laughs> Wait, what. That if your party was destroying the country, you might distract people heading into the midterms. True. True. But they would have made a big deal out of that regardless because, I mean, it's it's politically beneficial for them, right? Like, they have a bunch of people who are already radicalized and they can say anything they want to uh, get them going. Um, let's see. We'll, re we'll read this one from uh, Dean Obadala. Um Democrats are the real patriots. Okay, so this will be a good one. The January 6th here are not about helping Democrats win their midterms, as some of the media are stating. January 6th <laughs> hearings are about saving our Democratic Republic from GOP fascism. Oh, my God. You know the funniest part about this is? Is that the, de the, the Democrats that aren't openly, like, Dem socks and... Um, you know, or socialists or communists, like the pretty much any Democrat that is not an actual socialist or communist is an unironic fascist, right? The problem is they don't know what fascism means, right? They just think fascism is racism plus saying mean stuff, right? Like there's the, they have like these five IQ takes of what fascism is that they, and most of them have never read Mussolini or even like read about Mussolini to understand what he actually believed in. But, like, unironically, what they believe in is fascism, right? Like, this fusion between the government and the corporations and the unions for the betterment of the nation-state. And there is only the nation, right? There is no, you know, we are all into this together. Like, people think Mussolini was racist because he was on the same side of the war as Hitler, but he wasn't, right? That's like assuming that, you know, the Soviet Union, the United States, and the British 
all followed the same economic system, um, despite the fact that they didn't, right? The Soviet Union was a communist country. Britain was a empire with a mercantilist system designed around trade within its empire. And the United States was highly capitalistic, right? These were three very different economic systems um, that fought on one side of the war. Germany, the U.S., and Japan was the same thing. You had essentially a – with Japan, you had like a theocratic – monarchy right because they the, the religion of shintoism and all that was very much built into why they worshiped the monarch right so you had like a kind of theocratic f somewhat fascistic uh empire with italy which was actual fascism right like mussolini's the man who invented fascism and then hitler was the man who invented nazism right so these were not the same systems just because they were on the same side of the war. Um, and I feel like that's why so many of them, like, mischaracterize fascism. They mix up fascism and Nazism, which the GOP is not a Nazi state either. Like, they're, they're not – I mean, Trump was the first one to acknowledge Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. His daughter is married to a Jewish man. Um, he had Jews in his fucking, like, close association, right? Like, the dude has never been racist in his life. As, like as at least that we know about right like he's never been publicly racist you know who knows what he's doing behind the scenes but there's a lot of shit you can fucking bitch at trump about but like the, the idea that he's a fascist or you know what they really mean when they say fascist is that he's a nazi the idea that he's a nazi is ridiculous he's not a fascist because like even in the actual sense of the word not like the democratic um you know, fascism equals Nazi misunderstanding of the word, but an actual fascist, he's not that either, right? Like, unironically, not even, like, trying to, like, meme and be like, oh, they're the real fascist, but, like, they are the real, like, if you actually understand what fascism is as an ideology, these people unironically believe in fascism, but they're accusing everyone else of fascism. Like, the only, like, you have the Dem Socks and the actual, like, the actual socialists and the communists aren't fascists, right? It's a, the, the, Similar origins, different ideology, but like the main the mainstream viewpoint on the left is unironically fascism, right? But they don't understand what fascism is. They don't understand that fascism is not a racist ideology. It's a nationalistic ideology. Um, it's about the nation state above all else and the fusion of you know the unions and the workers and the businesses and the politicians all into the corpus, which is like. They are actual fascists. Like, quite literally, they are fascists. Um, but anyway, that's all for today. Like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what you think below. Uh, will the red wave... How big do you think the red wave will be? I think it's inevitable that there's a red wave. I think when you ma match the, you know, the history of how midterms tend to go, plus how disliked Biden is, plus the fact that even CNN is reporting on it, I think it's inevitable. L uh, like, comment, subscribe, and let me know how big you think the red wave will be. See you later, guys.